Hi everybody. Please excuse the mess today. Unfortunately, our household is in that weird in-between state after Christmas, but before New Year's, where the place is a complete disaster. So I'm kind of sitting amongst a lot of plants right now. Um, okay, if you've been watching my blog or the videos, you'll know that December, this inspiration for December is all about reinvention. And I recently did a blog post about self-reinvention. And I mentioned in that the concept of SMART goals, which some of you may know, some of you may not. It's one of the best systems personally that I love to use. It's, a it's an acronym and a method of using key ideas to set a goal that is attainable and realistic. So I thought I would go over those specifically today since, as some of you may know, January, the inspiration for January is planning. And I'm event an event planner and have been for a long time. Love doing parties and things. Did a lot of weddings. Um, educational and um, government so I thought I would use that to help everybody for the month of January set goals for the coming year because we all want to kick 2020 to the curb <laughs> I am sure so let's get started then the first letter is S the first letter in smart obviously is S S stands for specific so when you set a goal you always want to be specific We'll kind of use an example running through all of these uh, letters that is kind of universal and we'll do weight loss. <laughs> and that's kind of a classic New Year's resolution that most people fail at, including myself, unfortunately. But we'll go ahead and use that because I feel like it's a very understood concept. So specific. If you're setting a goal, you don't want to just be like, I just want to lose some weight because that could be anything. You could lose one pound and succeed <laughs> or you could lose a hundred. So you want to be specific. What is the exact number you want to lose? Or what is the exact thing you want to do? Think of your questions. Why, what, when, where, how, and who? Like, consider that. See if you can answer all those questions, or at least most of them, when setting the specific portion of your goal, so that you know exactly what you're reaching for. The next letter is M for measurable. This is kind of one of my favorite ones. It's kind of a way of recognizing your progress that you're making. How can you create a system for your goal that shows that you're making progress over a certain amount of time? With weight, that's kind of an obvious one. You can measure it with a scale. You can break up how much weight you want to lose into increments like 10 pounds, five pounds, and you can kind of gauge that as you go along. Sometimes some goals can be a little more complicated, such as mental health goals, which is something that I'm working on. It's a little hard, harder to measure those because you can't put a number to it. Now, I say that, but it's not necessarily true. One of the best systems I've used is kind of using your, if you've ever been to, the, to a doctor's office and they show you a pain scale, I, I think there's a name for that, but it's off the top of my head. The, um, do something like that, but with your feelings, your emotions, your mental health, whether it be depression, anxiety, and so on. Use that scale system, put a number to it. Or when you're thinking about specifics, which was our previous letter, or word rather, with S, think about what does that future look like? You can't put a number on mental health, things like mental health, but you can be like, say you're suffering from social anxiety. You can say, I am going to go outside in a better mental health state. I'm going to go outside into society two times a week, maybe eventually three, maybe eventually four or five. But it's a way of putting a, numer a num numerical <laughs> system to work so that you can actually measure as you're going along, which I think is a very important thing because if you don't feel like you're making it anywhere, you're a lot less likely to stick to your goals. The next letter is R, which is for relevant. Hopefully, if you're setting goals for yourself, it is something that genuinely means something to you. And relevant is where that comes into play. Your goals, regardless of what they are, should be something that means something to you, or you're less likely to stick with it. If you're just setting goals for the sake of someone else, because it's something they want for you, which, trust me, is a whole other video in of itself, because we all do it, you're not going to reach for those goals. You're more likely to fail. It has to be something that is relevant to you. Also considering your reasons why, which this kind of goes back to specifics in a way, but 
when looking at if something is relevant for you, really look at your reason why. Let's go back to the weight. Are you losing weight for someone else, to impress someone else, to be more attractive to someone else, or are you losing it for your own personal health? Is it for you? That's a big thing. You are less likely to fail if your goal comes from the inside and it is truly relevant. The next letter is R, which is for relevant. Hopefully, if you're setting goals for yourself, it is something that genuinely means something to you. And relevant is where that comes into play. Your goals, regardless of what they are, should be something that means something to you, or you're less likely to stick with it. If you're just setting goals for the sake of someone else, because it's something they want for you, which, trust me, is a whole other video in of itself, because we all do it, you're not going to reach for those goals. You're more likely to fail. It has to be something that is relevant to you. Also considering your reasons why, which this kind of goes back to specifics in a way, but when looking at if something is relevant for you, really look at your reason why. Let's go back to the weight. Are you losing weight for someone else, to impress someone else, to be more attractive to someone else, or are you losing it for your own personal health? Is it for you? That's a big thing. You are less likely to fail if your goal comes from the inside and is truly relevant. The final letter is T, which go stands for time. This kind of goes back to attainable as well. And it's putting a timeable form of measurement on your goal. How long are you giving yourself to complete this goal? If you don't put time on it, you could take as long as you want. Again, talking about weight, if you don't put some sort of deadline on your goal, you could spend the rest of your life losing weight. You could lose, say, 50 pounds in 50 years. And yeah, you could do that if that's what you want to do, but most people want to lose it all. At least I was a little quicker than 50 years, hopefully. The, um, so setting time goals kind of also goes back to really the entire SMART goal process. Is it measurable within that time frame? How can you set up measurements within whatever that a lot amount of time it is, whether it be a few weeks, a few months? Um, is it in realistically attainable in that time? Is it still going to be relevant for you in that period of time? So time like anything is encompassing. So kind of set realistic time frames for yourself. A lot of my goals fail and a lot of the goals of other people fail more often than not because of time. You expect yourself to get something done in this ridiculously small amount of time and it's impossible. And then you fail and you feel bad about yourself when you shouldn't. It's the fact that you set up this unrealistic time frame from the beginning, you set yourself up to fail. So definitely look at time when it comes to actually setting your goals and making them measurable. Okay, and those are all the letters of SMART goals. SMART goals is definitely a system that I put into practice. Sometimes, like I said, it's a little harder with goals such as like men mental health, where it's a little harder to put measurement on it. That sometimes can be the biggest struggle of all, and sometimes time frame as well. I feel like those two, measurability and time, are some of the biggest factors that play into setting goals. But that aside, definitely keep that in mind, maybe write that down. I will actually have a downloadable on my website and I'll try to link it below that you can download so you can kind of remember this stuff. You don't really have to take notes on it. Um, I'm also probably making a downloadable so that you can actually write in your own goals for the new year so that when we go into January, you can go forward planning and actually make 2021 a great year for us. Hopefully it's a great year for all of us. We absolutely need it. So I hope this was a little helpful video for you to learn about SMART goals and how you can set up for good planning come January. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Check out our recent blog posts on reinvention and we'll be heading into 2021 with a better spirit and good planning. Happy New Year everyone!